Hi guys, Freaky Fishka here. Today we'll be looking at the top 5 worst gimmick decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Check out the last vid from last week where we looked at the best gimmick decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that actually had some impact on the meta and were relatively successful. So whereas before the gimmicks worked and they actually had an impact on the meta because there might have been an interesting playstyle or maybe the, the gimmick exploited a part of the game that no one else had, these decks sadly did not. These decks I've seen little to no competitive play at all. In fact, some of these decks I'm pretty sure haven't even like seen play at locals. Uh, they are some of my fan favourites. You'll see a lot of them come from the anime, especially the early anime, because obviously that is when you go was... Uh, in its infancy, and it was trying to figure out new playstyles that might work, but unfortunately, these ones did not. However, there is one deck that does break this mould. Released in April of 2018, we have Lair of Darkness taking our number 5 spot. On paper, this deck sounds incredibly powerful. It's got an untargetable, untributable boss monster. It has effectively unstoppable monster removal with tributing for cost, and it can use the entire normal trap toolbox. Monsters like Lilith, it contribute for cost as a quick effect, meaning when coupled with the Lair of Darkness uh, field spell, which is what this deck is named for, this deck can tribute your monsters in your turn for cost before you can even respond. How did that not work? Well, sadly, as a structure deck, the deck only really had four to five cards that were good, in the sense that uh, Diablos was good, Lilith was good, Lair of Darkness was good, Arima was good, and that's where you draw the line. The Grave Grinning Virus, unfortunately, was not a good trap card. And four cards is not really the best way to build a deck, especially to stand alone on its own in the meta. Then when you break it down a bit more, with Diabolos being the boss monster, which is not really a starter on its own, and it doesn't really progress your game, you've got things like Arima, which is your terraforming, which is very, very good, but unfortunately means it won't be do much on the field. It has no negation, it has no combo starter. You have Lilith, which is probably the best card in the deck, uh, especially when coupled things like Tour Guide, which negates her effects, but she can still attribute for cost. But having a powerful 3 of in your deck doesn't really make the deck good. The monster lineup we've already spoken about, but then there's the trap cards. Normal trap cards used to be incredibly powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh! Things like Bottomless Trap Hole, Compulsory Evacuation Device. All these cards were incredibly good back in 2012. Unfortunately now we're in a state where normal trap cards will not win you the game, and as such this deck doesn't really function in today's meta game. Could this deck be good? Yes, with a bit more future support I can actually see this deck winning locals and at least seeing some play at regionals depending on what they get. But at the moment with the lacklustre monster lineup and relatively power creep of normal trap cards, this deck unfortunately is hitting our number 5 spot for the worst gimmick decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. The next deck I'm going to talk about is one of those decks from the GX era where they are trying to test around with playstyles to make things less, you know, beat face, big monster and more sort of uh, interesting game style. Unfortunately, this deck kind of didn't work. Coming in from uh, 2007, we have our number 4 spot, Cloudian. Cloudians require an advanced degree of skill to use properly at best. Uh, unfortunately, they rely on counters, which, as we all know from other archetypes, counters are not the most powerful or useful game mechanic in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. The biggest problems we can already see with this archetype is the fact that to produce counters, they usually have to normal summon their cards. This inherently makes them rather slow to get moving, they did get new support in Dark Neo Storm, which is a quick play spell to try and increase that tempo, but unfortunately it just didn't really work. Coupled with the fact that all their effects are kind of power creep by the day standards and were pretty bad even when they came out, the deck doesn't really do a lot. Its most go-to play style is sort of a stall strategy. Did I mention all Cloudians can't really go in defense mode, otherwise they just blow up? Uh, and they have to stay in attack mode, and they have very low attack for most of them. This means that you can punch through them quite a lot. While in attack mode, they can not be destroyed by battle, but that just means you're punching a small thing more times, which doesn't really help you. The best thing I've ever seen done with Cloudians, and I will admit I have lost this deck on Dueling Book. I was playing a meme deck myself, but I have lost to Cloudians. It's sort of a, a weird stall strategy where they, they you take no battle damage and you can't be destroyed by battle, and they have a, a, a spell card which protects them. But inherently, that doesn't really do a lot. And if I wasn't playing a meme deck, they wouldn't have done anything. As such, that game ended in me decking out because I didn't have any removal in my meme deck to out the things protecting their monsters. Inherently, the archetype doesn't do a lot. So unfortunately, for that exact reason, they're going to end up with number four spot on the worst gimmick decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Then, a year later, we have the next deck on our list. Released in 2008, this deck could swarm the field with multiple monsters in a turn and was... Quite advanced for the time with a lot of useful effects. 
Our number three spot goes to Morphotronics. Morphotronics are a series of monsters where they are mostly machines, however some of them are different types, and they are sort of gimmicked around the idea that they switch their battle position and roll dice to do a multiple of effects. The best build of this deck was a Synchro Spam deck. Clefon is a machine dupe target as well as a tuner. This already gave the deck access to tuners. Then with their own play style of spamming up monsters, they could do quite powerful synchro plays involving Crystal uh, Wing Synchro Dragon as well as other monsters. The other strategy of this deck was just big numbers. Uh, Radeon, Boombox, and Borden and Clefon together could increase their attack enough basically to just over decay the opponent. By 2008 standards, this is not a bad shout. So what makes this deck bad? RNG. Dice rolling is a poor mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh. You can do everything right and then suddenly your, your strategy just falls apart because you rolled a dice wrong. Coupled with the fact that the archetype generally lacks first turn plays rather than having scope and cleft on with machine dupe etc. The deck doesn't really do a lot on its first turn. Another minor weakness of the archetype was the fact that you need to change your battle position depending on which effect you needed. As such, if you needed a very specific effect, it would be rather slow to reach that effect. And as such, the deck kind of just fell into power creep after a few years of being released. As such, Morphotronics goes down in our number 3 spot for the worst gimmick decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. In our number 2 spot, we have another GX archetype, Arcana Force. Now, to give some credit to Arcana Force, it does have some incredibly powerful monsters. Look at you, the world, Zerwado. This card can very much skip your opponent's turn, and has seen a lot of play in FTKs where... Instead of just letting your opponent play, instead of burning them the first turn, you just sort of skip their first few turns and punch them in the face. So while they have one very good monster, that doesn't save the rest of the deck. The deck is bad, and I mean bad. It needs coin tosses to do pretty much minimal effects, and sadly, the deck doesn't really do a lot. Even when it came out, it was terrible. I could go into depth into why coin tossing and this deck in particular is very bad, but there's literally hundreds of videos out there why I can of force is a bad deck. I'm not saying turn off my channel, but... If you really want to know why Cannon Force is bad, please go check out those videos. They'll explain it a lot better than me. But just know that Cannon Force is bad, and we're going to put it in our number two spot for worst gimmick decks of all time. Before we get to the deck that has got a worse gimmick than our Cannon Force, I'm going to give a quick dishonorable mention to another deck Nordics. This deck actually has some quite powerful synchro monsters. Loki, Thor, and Odin all have really useful effects negating a spell or trap, negating your opponent's monsters, or becoming unaffected by card effects. They also have a recursion effect, where if they're destroyed by a card effect, they can come back from the grave by banishing a certain tuner from your graveyard. This is actually a pretty cool mechanic, and I would actually like to see some new Nordic support. However, they're on this list for a reason. Outside of these three synchros, the deck doesn't really do a lot, and they can be incredibly difficult to create these synchros by their own. As such, they got a Link monster, which kind of actually just auto-made one of these um, synchro monsters, and de still the deck saw no play. The whole deck revolves around making one Towers-esque monster per turn, and the Towers doesn't really do a lot outside Loki, who has the only quick effect effect that actually interacts with your opponent. As such, this deck gets the dishonorable mention spot for our top 5 worst gimmick decks of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, for the moment all two of you that are still watching this video have been waiting for, we have the worst gimmick deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Taking our number one spot is the deck that I kind of completely forgot about. We have Reptilian. This is a very weird deck. It revolves around making your opponents attack zero. That's already an incredibly weird gimmick that we have never seen before. Before I talk about why this deck is bad, I'm going to talk about what they even tried to do in the first place. Just so you guys get an idea of why this deck doesn't really work. As mentioned before, this deck revolves around making your opponent's attack monsters zero attack. This can be done in multiple ways. A clear one is with uh, Naga. This card cannot be destroyed by battle. The attack of any monster that battles this card becomes zero at the end of that battle phase. During the end phase of the turn, changes the monster from defense position to attack position. This effect can then be coupled with things like Scanner. If this card destroys a monster with zero attack by battle, you can special summon that monster to from their graveyard to your field in defense position, but its effects are negated. Sounds like a pretty simple combo, you whack a monster into it, then you whack another monster into it, and then you steal their monster. However, did anyone else see the problem? Naga's effect only comes into effect at the end of that battle phase, meaning you have to wait a whole other turn before you can use the Skuller to steal their monster, and that's if they kept their zero attack position monster in attack mode. We're also overlooking the fact that Naga has zero attack, which means for this whole dex gimmick to even work, it's as if your opponent is attacking you directly because you're punching a zero attack monster into their monsters. Another 
good monster that uses these zero attack monsters is Vasky. This guy can be special summoned from your hand by attributing two monsters your opponent controls with zero attack. You can also select and destroy one face up monster your opponent controls per turn. So once they drain the opponent's monster's attack, these cards are actually not too bad. They have pretty cool effects. What's the problem? They have six ways of making these uh, attack zero. Naga plus Gorgon, they both need to attack. We've already discussed this is a bad uh, mechanic. Lamia is okay, but you need to take damage as if you had attacked, which again, just put that in the other pile of Nag Naga and Gorgon. Medusa is a level six, and he's a discard, meaning you effectively go minus two, one for the tribute, one for the discard in a long game, and who's tribute, to, who's tribute to summoning in this day and age? And then finally, Reptilian Poison. Ah, a spell card. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Something that is good and doesn't need some sort of monster attack or weird effect to actually work. It only works in defense position monsters, which kind of completely overrules uh, Link monsters. And if your opponent's putting stuff in defense mode, they're either playing some terror or they're losing. There's no in-between. Obviously, I'm judging these cards by today's standards, but even back when they came out, these cards were terrible. They were coasters for cups. These these are probably the worst gimmick cards I've ever seen in my life. They did get a new Link Monster, but we're not even going to address that because the whole rest of the deck does not work. Can this deck be saved? I would really much like to say yes, but probably no. The whole reliance on zero attack is not a good mechanic and it was probably never going to work unless they get a Dark Ruler No More that makes all their opponents attack zero for the rest of the turn and the rest of the game. This deck probably won't ever see play again. It's kind of sad because reptiles don't really get a lot of cool mechanics and cool archetypes and I'd love to see some new reptile support. But sadly they are going to go down as the worst gimmick deck in the history of gimmick decks. At least with a kind of force you kind of get lucky with your, your coin tosses and you don't really need to hurt yourself for your game mechanic to even work. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you feel that generous and uh, I'd like to see you all next time. Goodbye.